Hello guys, um, welcome to my channel. Um, this is the first video on numerical methods using Mathematica and I will be exploring the bisection method. Um, first and foremost, I will explain the rationale behind this method and then we will go over to the coding. One point though that I need to make is I won't be able to upload videos as quickly as you want me to be because A, I have a life and B, I have a job that pays me other than this uh, YouTube nonsense that doesn't pay me. Anyway, without further ado, um, let's get coding. Right, before I get to the bisection method, I think it is helpful to plot this function so that I can explain it with a visual aid. So I'm actually going to plot it over here. You use the plot function on mathematical, I'll assume you know that. And we want to plot it between x equals 0 and 5. And there it is. Now the theorem states that f of x1 times f of x2 has to be less than 0 in order for you to proceed with the method. Now why is that? If we look at this plot over here, the function value before it crosses the root is negative. That is in this region over here. It is negative. But the function value, that is the y value, after it crosses the point, that is the root point, becomes positive. So if you multiply this negative value by this positive value, you'll always get a negative value which is less than zero. And that's why the theorem states that f of x1 times f of x2 must be less than zero. Right. Now let's proceed to how you get the iterations and I will show you a couple of special conditions later on. Um, <coughs> say now we're going to do the first iteration. Bef uh, goodness, I'm too lazy to type the whole word iteration. Um, before we do that, um, your lecturer will give you a point, um, a, a domain or an interval to which you can interpolate and that interval will probably be say something like 1 and 2 or 1 and 3. So we'll take 1 and 2 for easier calculations. Now the theorem states that you need you need to figure out whether the values of the functions between these two points at these two points will give you something less than zero. So f of x1, which is 1, and f of x2, which is 2, should be less than zero. And how do we do that? Well, it's easy. We've already defined the function in mathematics. Oh, we need to define the function in mathematica. And uh, how we do that is as follows. And we run that, shift enter and we've stored the function as f. Now we get the value of f at x value 1 and that is negative. Get the f value of f at x value 2 and that's positive. And the sign change indicates that there is a point that lies between the two points. There is a root rather that lies between the two points. So how do we go about getting those uh, that, that root? Well we do that iteratively of course. In the first iteration which I'm just going to indicate as well because I'm too lazy to type. Well, the theorem states that you need to get the midpoint of the two points that you've been given. So you've been given 1 and 2. And we'll call this midpoint 1 and 2. And you just divide those two the, sum, the sum of those two numbers by 2. And you get that as 3 over 2. So from there on, we can get the numerical value of f at m1, m1 being the value that we got, the 3 over 2 value that we got. And the numerical value there is positive, right? So we want this function to go more towards 0. And right now it's somewhere over here. And we want it to go more towards this side. We already have a point that is on the negative end, and we have a point that is on the positive end. The point that we had at the positive end was 1. Sorry, it was 2, which was over here. But now we tried 1.5, which is somewhere here, and it still showed us that the value is positive. Therefore, this point at 1.5 is a lot closer 
to zero than this point is. So we take this point, which is a lot closer to the root of the function, and we change that to, to the point that is a lot closer to the root of the function. And therefore, let me just delete that output. It's not of much use to me right now. We can actually just get it back. Right, so therefore, we change our new search domain to one and uh, three over two, three over two, which is just M1 actually. So I can just write that as M1. Right, so then we proceed now and we look for M2, which is the midpoint of one and M1. So we can just go one plus M1, divide that by two, and you get 5 over 4 as m2 and again you get the value of the function at m2 now what do we see we see that the value of this function at m2 is now negative it's no longer positive what that tells us is this point lies somewhere in this region in the negative region of the function but this point 5 over 4 is a lot closer to 0 than 1 was because 1, which is here, was a lot further from the 0 of this function than 5 over 4, which is just somewhere here. I hope that makes sense. Right. So what that means is we're going to substitute um, the value 1 by 5 over 4. And indeed, our new search domain, uh, let me just move over and change that, will be M2 and M1. So then we proceed and we get M3, which is the midpoint of M1 plus M2. And we divide that by 2. And we get that as 11 over 8. Right. So what do we want to do now? We want to check where this 11 over 8, whether this 11 over 8 is going to give us a positive value or a negative value so that we can update our domain accordingly. So the f of m3 is the 0.144. So since it's 0.144, it's positive. But that 0.144 is a lot closer to the zero of the function than the previous positive value was. So you change the previous positive value and now instead of searching between um, m1 and m2 remember m2 is now the value that gave us the negative value we're gonna search between uh, let me just change that to text mode we're gonna search between m2 and m3 and you can proceed to however many iterations you want to go to Let's say you wanted to get um, only four iterations in that case, we will find M4 equals M2 plus M3. You divide that by 2 and you get M4. And you get the numerical value of the function at M4. And there we go. So the numerical value of the function at M4 is 0.92. And the actual root that we got after um, four iterations is 21 over 6. And if you want to get the numerical value of that, all you got to do is capital N, M4, and voila. And of course, this is very close to that value 1.325, as we can see, is very close to what the actual value of the root is. And you can continue to however many iterations you need to go to. I hope this makes sense. Um, like and subscribe this video to get more videos. And if you've got any questions, post a comment in the description. Rather in the comment section. And I'll try to answer them best I can.